An official with Graham and Godwin Funeral Home in Lake City telling us that the body of Shahid Woodard is now at their funeral home. We're told that they picked up Woodard's body at 2 o'clock this afternoon at the Charleston Airport. It's still unclear tonight if Zendel Brown's body is back in Lake City. The men traveled to Mexico nearly two weeks ago with Latavia Washington McGee and Eric Williams to take Latavia there for cosmetic surgery. The group was followed by trucks until they eventually crashed. The suspects fired weapons and four people hit the ground. Eric, Shaid and Zendel were all shot. Latavia was not hurt. She's now back home in Myrtle Beach with her family. Eric is still in a Texas hospital where we're told he has had to undergo five surgeries to deal with his injuries. The FBI is continuing its investigation into the kidnapping and the murders. Their family members tell me that they traveled to that country to take a friend there for a medical procedure. Now the family says all they can do is pray, hope, and wait. When I found out he was en route in Mississippi, Christopher Hickson says she had no clue her son, 28-year-old Zendel Brown, had left the state, yet alone the country. Brown is one of four missing and feared kidnapped in Mexico. Grant says she talked with her brother last Thursday while he and three other friends were driving to Mexico. I felt a little uneasy because I told him I had a dream. You know, I said, so I'm just checking on you. That's what I told him Thursday. And then, like I said, Friday morning, I texted and I didn't get anything. According to CNN, the four are believed to have been targeted by mistake and were not the intended victims. We are closely following uh, the kidnapping of four U.S. citizens in Matamoros uh, on March 3rd. Uh, the FBI working very closely um, with other federal partners and Mexican law enforcement agencies uh, to investigate this. The U.S. State Department issued a travel advisory last week for Americans to not travel in that part of Mexico. Hickson says she learned of the advisory after her son and his friends were kidnapped. I would have told him, don't go any further. Now the family says all they can do is pray and wait. The waiting is the worst part. It, uh, it has its advantages and disadvantages, but however, no news is good news. That's the way I'm staying with it. No news is good news. I spoke with the sister and she says they were waiting for the FBI to confirm more information for them. Brown's family says whatever the outcome, they were ready to accept it, even if it meant their loved one didn't make it. I don't have any worries um, because I know who I am and I know who God is. The mother and sister of 28-year-old Zendel Brown sat down Monday to talk with me about Brown's kidnapping. We now know he and his friend Shaid Woodard were killed after they were caught in the crossfire of rival drug cartels Friday. Brown's mother said she was prepared for whatever the situation. I have made up my mind that either way it goes, I have no other choice but to accept. But God is a good God. Brown and Woodard were traveling with Latavia Washington McGee and Eric Williams to the country for McGee to undergo cosmetic surgery. Both of them survived. I talked with McGee's mother, Barbara Burgess, Tuesday afternoon by phone. Burgess told me she talked with Latavia while she was being examined at a hospital in Texas. Yeah, she said I, I talked to her. I talked to her. Let me, uh, the nurse at the hospital called and let me talk to her. Burgess says it's been quite the ordeal for her daughter, and she's just thankful it's all over. She was crying, but she didn't say, I asked her, how she doing? She, she was doing okay, but she was crying because her brother got killed. She watched him die. Yeah, she watched two of them die. They, got, they died in front of her. I got my daughter, and she's alive. Zendale Brown's mother says that she had no idea that he and his friends were traveling to Mexico. She found out when they reached, already had reached Mississippi. She said if she had known earlier, she would have asked her son not to go because parts of Mexico just aren't safe. Live in Lake City, Tanya Brown, ABC 15 News. Thank you, Tanya. A Lake City pastor plans to hold a prayer vigil tomorrow night for the families of those killed and the community as a whole. The wife of the other surviving victim, Eric Williams, spoke to ABC News, and here's what she told them. Um, 
he it was just um it was just tears of joy i guess that that he's he's alive Williams and McGee are now at a Brownsville, Texas hospital tonight, and that's where our team coverage continues. Yami Verheen with our Sinclair sister station has been at the U.S.-Mexico border all day. She has more tonight on the investigation by Mexican authorities. Latavia McGee and Eric James Williams are now here at the Valley Regional Medical Center. According to Latavia's mother, whom we spoke to earlier, both are in good condition. Overnight, there were raids done by Mexican authorities all over the city of Matamoros, just across from Brownsville, Texas. Around 8 a.m. is when the Mexican government says that the four who were kidnapped on Friday were found. It was in this building in the outskirts of Matamoros, going towards a beach area called Baghdad, about 40 minutes away from the Texas resort area of South Padre Island. Shaid Woodard and Sindel Brown were dead inside. McGee and Williams were alive and then were taken to the Veterans Bridge where the exchange took place with the FBI, Homeland Security and other federal agents. They were then brought here to Valley Regional Hospital in Brownsville. According to former Homeland Security agent in charge, Adi Jimenez, this leaves the cartels in a bad situation. The cartels don't really want to get into the business of murdering Americans that because that brings bad attention to them and to their business model. So far, the FBI, which is the lead agency, has not set up a press conference. Reporting from Brownsville, I'm Jamie Virgen. Politicians and leaders are reacting to the situation tonight. Senator Tim Scott sending a statement to ABC 15 saying, quote, this is a heartbreaking tragedy for our state and nation. And I encourage others to join me in praying for the victims and their families. I will continue to work with law enforcement and officials at every level of government to demand answers for South Carolinians. Congressman Russell Fry also reacting tonight. The congressman saying, quote, Mexican drug cartels wield more power than ever before. And this horrible incident sheds more light on the violence that stems from their rampant illicit activity that impacts not only our border states, but my home state of South Carolina. Sending his condolences to the families and saying that he is supporting them in every way he can. Meanwhile, here's what Attorney General Merrick Garland had to say about the incident today. I've been briefed by the FBI, which is working with Mexican authorities. And senior department officials are working closely with our counterparts at the State Department. During this difficult time, I want to offer my deepest sympathies to the families of the Americans who were attacked and kidnapped.